Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. I love today's project and I think you will too. Stay tuned. So welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here. We are going to have some amazing crafty fun. I want to welcome all of my new subscribers and I want to give a virtual hug to everyone who has bought me a cup of coffee. Y'all have been so super generous and it just means the world to me and it is so touching. And the messages you've been leaving with the coffee have been so amazing. I'm a little bit behind on responding to those and acknowledging those, but trust me, each and every one will get a personal acknowledgement of thanks from me. So today we're going to make something so super meaningful. Whether you choose to make it for dad, heck uncle, a brother, a male friend, whomever you choose to make this for is going to love it because it is so touching and so sentimental. And here's what I'm talking about. Because it is so super simple, I'm not going to show you the front just yet, but this is meant to be on a mantle or it's meant to be on a bedside table or it's meant to be on a desk. It is just one of those things. When he looks at it, it will make him smile. Trust me on that. So Y'all know what time it is? It is time to make it. All right, guys, so it is reveal time. But on the back of this project, I have no beauty shines brighter than that of a good heart. And when you flip it over, this is what we have. I have this on here just as a masculine embellishment. But when you open it, look at all of this gorgeousness. I absolutely am in love with this paper collection. And I'll show you what it is in a minute. So I decided to make a little bifold. This can go anywhere that a picture frame can go. It is awesome, amazing, gorgeous, all in one. So right here we have this beautiful photo space and it's perfect for that favorite photo with dad, with uncle, with brother, with mentor, with best friend, with grandpa, whomever it is you want to highlight on here. This is a perfect place to do it. And if that person happens to be a car buff, this is the perfect paper collection for them. So on this side, I just used some of those word stickers from the Small Talk Collection by Tim Holtz. And I put a beautiful little message. Embrace beautiful chaos. This is what family looks like. Embrace the journey. Life is good. And as I was doing this, I was thinking about my son-in-law because during the early days of COVID, when travel was restricted and parents had to work from home to keep income coming in, but at the same time, they tended to have small children or children in the house. And at the time, my grandchildren were two and three and my daughter and son-in-law were both working from home with a very active two-year-old and a very active three-year-old. And I just have so much respect for my son-in-law because he is an awesome father. He is so kind and so patient and so loving with those children. But at times it was chaotic because you have two toddlers who really don't understand a pandemic and what that means. They just want what they want, when they want it and how they want it, but you still have to work. But when I saw these words, I thought about him and I thought about him and all other parents during that time that it had to be chaotic, but he embraced it because that is what family looks like and life is good. So I thought that was perfect for this. So here's what we're going to need to make this project. I have these little metal gears that you guys have seen me use probably for the last two years on YouTube. And I will have a link in the description box for that. Then I have some of the metal snaps that you guys have seen me using recently. Um, I'll have a link in the description box for that as well. Then we're going to be using this little belt buckle that I got from Hobby Lobby, but you can probably find this in any store that sells sewing supplies. And this one is from the Sewology collection. Got it when it was 50% off. So this was a dollar for me to purchase. And then I have a two and a half by five and a half inch mat. Then I have my white mat that measures three and a half by five. Then I have the background mat that measures four by five and a half. Then I have two pieces of chipboard and it's a medium weight chipboard link in the description box. And my first piece measures three by seven. My second piece measures seven by seven. And then I have the back liner piece that I'll be using on this one. And this measures six and three quarters by 10. And then I'm using decorative cardstock that measures nine by 12. And I have decided that I want to use this piece, but I wanted to share this awesome paper collection with you guys, because if you have ever been looking for 
rustic, grungy looking, masculine paper. This is it. This is some gorgeous paper. I have been trying to purchase single sheets only, but I took a chance and bought this paper pack because I was at my favorite local scrapbook store, Paper Crafters Muse here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And as I was checking out, I looked around and I saw this on one of the end caps and I looked at it and I thought, ah, that's not me. But then as I looked at it more, I saw how beautiful it actually was. So I bought a paper pack and I have to tell you, there isn't a single sheet in here that I don't love. I'm going to give you a very quick look so that you can see what I mean. So this is the sheet that I'm going to be working with today. That is the back side. This whole collection has that rusted metal look. And this paper is from Chow Bella and it is from the Collateral Rust Collection. And if you're looking for this, the SKU, is 052-789-434-783. So I have cut aparts on the front page, but then on the back, we also have that rustic corrugated metal look. And then you have these beautiful cut aparts here at the bottom. And then we have this page that has like drawings and diagrams on it. And on the back side, we have a motorcycle, an old motorcycle. And then we have this beautiful scene and then here, if you wanted to, you could take this page, cut it out, because then you'll have all types of little pieces of ephemera that you can add to your project. Or you could flip it over and use the back side. It just looks like it's all rusted out. On this page, we have a whole bunch of weights. And on the back side, we have a page that is just filled with little mini weights. And, and I love this one because it reminds me of the old timey gas stations. And that's exactly what this print page looks like. And when you flip it over to the reverse side, you have brick that has chipped away and you've got that rusted look behind it. And then on this one, you've got your Chevrolet symbol, you've got Mac, you have a wonderful motor layout. Flip it over, you have more of that wonderful motor layout. And then on this one, you have a Hodge of everything. You have a fire hydrant, looks like some brick, rivets, rust, all of those beautiful things. And then on this side, you've got bottle caps. How stinking cute is that? This is such a wonderful page right here to work with. Like I said, there's not a single page in this pack that I didn't like once I bought it. Then we have a page of license plates. So you could actually cut this page apart and use it as cut aparts, or you could use it as a main page. And on the back side, it looks like these are screws. Now I could be wrong, but that's what they look like to me. And then we have a page that has that patina look with a lot of rust on the outside. And then we have this awesome page of cut aparts. You've got the old motorcycle, Route 66, the old Dodge truck, the chain and gears on a Harley Davidson motorcycle. How sweet is that? It says genuine Harley Davidson. Didn't see that until just now. I actually have a relationship with Harley Davidson from my previous life. So when I saw this, how exciting is that? And then my final page, just a bunch of metal stamp numbers. And on the back side, this reminds me of how the old gas pumps used to look when the numbers would rotate and flip and flip. I'm not sure if that is what that is meant to be, but that's what it reminds me of. So hopefully you've liked this look at this Collateral Rust collection by Chow Bella. I'm not even sure when this came out. I just happened to see it in the store. Normally, it's not something that I would gravitate towards, but I am so glad I did, and I'm actually going to pick up another pack because I love this paper. So I'm going to take my 12 by 12 inch piece, and I'm going to trim it to 12 by nine, and I have decided that I actually want the Ford portion of this, but of course I won't throw this away because that's beautiful and I can use it on something else. So I have added tape to my three by seven inch piece of chipboard and to my seven by seven inch piece and I'm just going to peel away the tape backer. And now I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to place it down just like that. And then when I take this piece, because I do want a good fold, I am actually going to place it down using about a half inch spacing between the two pieces of chipboard. So you can see I have a very wide spacing between those two pieces of chipboard. 
So I'm going to take my stylus and basically what I'm doing is I'm pressing it against the chipboard and driving it into the paper to get a nice score. And I'll do this all the way around. This will make it easier for me to fold and have a nice crisp crease, but it also helps in case my paper has a tendency to crack, which I haven't found with this paper. So now I'm going to take my finger blade and I'm just going to miter cut those edges. And by miter cutting, all I'm doing is coming in at an angle, making sure I have about an eighth of an inch in paper so that I can fold this over and get a professional fold. So now that I've got my edges mitered, I am going to take my tape and just place my tape down. And then I'm going to take my tape runner and just add some tape on the edges of my two long pieces. So then I'm going to peel away my tape. And I'm not sure why I tore this tape right here because I didn't need to. I want it to come all the way across. So I'll peel away that tape. And now I'll just stand this up, fold it over. Do the same thing here, fold it over, and that's the reason why I put the tape on the edges here, because once I folded this over, it took up the tape space there, so I needed to add some tape there to keep that nice and stuck. So I am just going to go over this with my big old spatula to make sure that I have everything nice and stuck. So now we have this. We are going to take this piece and put it down. But before we do, I am just going to take some tape and I am going to place tape down to cover the exposed chipboard. And then I'm going to take my big old spatula, get that nice and smooth, and we'll peel away these tape backers. So now we can take our liner that measures six and three quarters by 10. I have added tape to the four edges of this liner. You can actually use glue too if you want. There is no reason and why I switch between glue and tape for this part. It just happens to be what is out and handy. Now I'm going to take this piece and we're going to put it down. And I'll use my big old spatula to make sure I have an excellent stick on this. And I'll go into that spine, making sure I have a nice stick there. So now I can actually take my spine and I'm going to bend it in this direction because this is how it's actually going to be when we have it setting out. This is the side on which we are going to work. So I'm going to bring in my belt buckle and I'm just going to put that here because I think it's cute. You don't have to add this to yours. I just think it gives a little masculine look to the outside of this, which is exactly what I want. So I'm going to bring in my crocodile big bite because I need to punch a hole and I have it set on my 1 8 setting and I'm going to try to go through these two pieces of leather at the same time and so now that we have our holes punched I am going to take this and place it down 
I'm going to use my stylus to go into that hole to make an impression. So I'm just pushing that stylus through the hole and on my paper, I don't know if you guys can see that indentation. You probably can't, but I made two little marks with my stylus. So now I can take my Crocodile Big Bite and then I'm just going to punch. And then I'll do the same thing on this end. All right, y'all, so one thing that I should have done is I should have placed down my two and a half by five and a half inch piece before I actually punch my holes, but that's okay because that's an easy part to figure out. I am just going to take some tape and place some tape on this and then we'll put it down. All right, y'all, so I'm just going to take this piece and we're going to place it down just like that. And then I'm just going back over the hole so that I can punch my hole. And now I can take my little belt buckle and I'm going to take one of my prongs, put the prong through that hole like that. And then I'll take that and punch it through that hole. I'll take the little snap head, put it on top and close it, and then we'll do the same thing here. I'm going to take that snap prong and put it through the hole. Then we'll put it through that hole, flip that over, and close it. And now we have that beautiful little message board right there. And now I'll bring in my white mat that measures three and a half by five, and I'm going to attach it to the mat that measures four by five and a half. So I am going to use some of my tape runner on this. And then we can take it and just place it down. Then I'll add some tape runner to the back. And then I'm going to take this piece and we're going to put it right here underneath 1934, put it down just like that. And so now that we have it down like this, I am going to use my metal gears just as decorations. And if you decide to use these, how you place yours guys is really up to you. There is no right or wrong way to decorate when you're decorating but I decided to use my metal gears on this because I think it falls in line with that whole rusted metal look. So the beauty of this, my reptile glue will hold these gears in place. It will actually adhere metal to metal. I'm going to place it down right there. Then I'm going to take this piece, add my glue, and I'm going to place this piece on top of this piece. And when the glue dries, those two gears will be stuck. Then I'm going to take this gear, add some glue, and put it right there. And then I'll take this little tiny gear Add some glue and place it right there. So then here at the top, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this larger gear, place it down. Then I'll take another medium sized gear, add some glue to the back and put that on top. And those two will be stuck once that glue dries. Then I'm going to take another one of the medium sized gears. I'm adding some glue. I'm going to place that right there. And then I'm going to take one of my teeny little gears, add some glue and place it right there. So while those are drying, I'm just going to find a saying for over here. So I like this one that says, you can never have too much happy. So I'm going to cut it and I'm going to place that right there. 
I'll place the Too Much Happy right there. Then I like the one that says, Live Simply, Give Generously. So I'm going to cut that one also. And we're going to place that right there and that one right there. And then to close this out, I am going to add Do Your Best. I'm going to use my big old spatula to make sure I have a very good stick on these. So the finished message is, you can never have too much happy. Live simply, give generously, do your best. And I think that those are great words of encouragement for him. When I stand this up, you can see that my gears are already starting to dry because they're not sliding off at all. But that is just absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to bring that first one back in so that y'all can see the two of these together because they are beautiful. And the paper is just right for a project like this. But I have had so much fun making these with you guys and I am so excited about this paper collection. I just can't say it enough, I love it. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this project. If you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.